Everybody loves deadlift. Everybody loves deadlift. Everybody wants to deadlift. All right, my dear sumo lifters out there, if you are wondering how do I get an upright position in a sumo deadlift, I tell you what, maybe you are looking in the wrong direction. I'm Clinton from Technic Matters. Today, I'm going to show you how do I get into an optimal starting position for the sumo deadlift. When I was in Vietnam for a workshop, one of the guys actually commented about the sumo deadlift and he believes that one should keep their hips as high as possible while maintaining a good position to allow knee extension. He is right and hence, in order to get into a most optimal position for the starting of the sumo, one should always look at how the hip positioning is. Yes, you heard it. Instead of trying to be as upright as possible, we should always look at where your hip positioning should be. So everyone's body leverages is different. Today, I am going to show you how to go into an optimal position based on your body leverages and muscle composition. Before we start on getting the optimal position for sumo, we must first understand the basic principles of the positioning for sumo deadlift. As you can see from this illustration here, what we want to look at is a very stable and solid base whereby your toes are in the right direction so we always want to look at the toe positioning and behavior number two we want to look at where your knee positioning is where is it angled so we always want to angle outside and outwards not forward so your knee cap should always be facing the ends of the bar and number three how do you create external rotation of the hips okay so let me just give you a basic idea for the foot we always want to maintain a good foot arch so that we have a three point pressure against the floor which is the biggest toe the whole of the outside foot and lastly the heels okay by allowing this position it is very helpful in your initial part of the lift because it helps to make sure you are engaging your quads to do the off the floor motion okay and of course, your knees need to be always facing out because when you pull, you want the bar to go upwards. By go if your knees are facing forward, it is very hard to engage your glutes and also for the bar to maintain a straight line up because if you pull and kick forward, the bar will roll forward. Okay? No matter how strong your legs are to keep the bar in place, it is very hard for you to keep the bar uh, going upwards it will keep rolling forward and lastly which is the most important part and the part where i will mention the most and i want you to put attention to is your hip behavior and how you create external rotation so today one of the most important thing for a good sumo deadlift is how do i engage the glute medius okay if you're unsure what a glute medius is this is an illustration and then you can take a basic look at where the glute medius are Alright, so if I want to actually feel it, you just have to put your hand behind to your lower back and slightly below and to the side. This is your glute medius, the chunky part. Okay, it's not as big as the glute max, but that part of the muscle is very, very important to create external rotation. Okay, in the later part of this video, JJ is going to show you how to improve that glute medius awareness and how do I strengthen the glute medius. So once again, glute medius is the one and external rotation of the hips is the one that we are talking about today. So how do I get into that position and why is it important? Okay, so if your glute medius is strong and you are aware of it, it can help to allow the external rotation. It helps to position the knees out as much as possible and it translates to getting your hips closer to the bar. So obviously, when your hips are closer to the bar, your positioning, your body will look more upright, okay? So do not compensate your torso position and torso behavior, meaning rounding of the back to get your hips as close as possible because this is one of the problems I see from my athletes and people out, out there, okay? So if you are doing something like this, where your back round to get your hips close to the bar, then it's wrong. This is not what you want. What you want is this. Okay, so basically back as neutral as possible, shoulder in line with the bar 
and lastly hip in the optimal position okay so everybody's hip positioning is different and torso angle is different so it's best to base your technique based on your own leverages okay now that you have understand what is the muscles involved to create the external rotation and how important glute medius is i'm going to show you some of the exercises that we recommend for you to do to improve their glute medius uh, engagement okay so the first one jj is going to show you is the most easiest exercise and i believe you can do it everywhere and at home and in the gym and a pre-warm up before you go into the deadlift this is called a lying lateral leg raise okay so be sure to turn your foot inwards and lift your legs up so that you can feel the glute medius okay so one of the most important thing is you do not crunch your obliques down, keep your back as straight as possible and then just move from hip down onwards. The next exercise is very good because it helps to create that awareness. It is very specific to the sumo deadlift and also it helps to train the glute medius. Okay, this is called a sumo glute hole. So when you position yourself into this setup, you actually want to adopt the same uh, sumo stance you always adopt in your deadlift. Okay. So from here, all you need to do is to fight against the band because the band is trying to push you in. So push the band out and then hold in that position. Don't forget to lean forward and keep your hips high, uh, higher than the knees. Because if you don't do that, you are not actually feeling the glute medius. You will feel a lot more on the hip flexors. The, the third exercise is a stiff leg Romanian sumo deadlift. So what happens is we are teaching you how to engage your glute medius while keeping your back straight and hinge back. So this is a very good movement pattern exercise for you to do so that you do not round your back. So if you are someone who are actually rounding your back when you're doing your sumo deadlift, this is a good drill for you to practice so that you can kick the old habits and adopt the right one. And the last exercise is the actually the split squats with resistance band and a, uh, and a plate right in front of you. So the, what does the plate do is actually to prevent you from your foot to collapse. Remember I mentioned about the foot arch, the three point. So this exercise helps to train your foot arch and also the knee behavior. So what you want to do is always try to keep your knee as neutral as possible by engaging the glute medius and lunge. So the band will try to pull your band inwards. So your, your, your job is to fight against it. So all four exercises are the ones that will help you improve your behavior of your starting position for sumo deadlift so make sure you do it so now that you have understand the importance of creating external rotation so as to maintain a neutral torso and a good behavior of where your knee and your foot positioning is for the starting position of the sumo deadlift now we want to move into how do i get into that position okay so Obviously, we want to go back to the same principle, shoulders in line with the bar, hips always higher than the knees and knees stacked right on top of the ankles and the foot pressure. Okay, so in order to get into that position, there are two ways of doing it. The first one is the dynamic way of doing it, which is first, we want to set the stance first. Okay, and then toe positioning. And once you set a toe positioning, this is the secret. In order to create external rotation from this, access, uh, from this position is to bend your knees slightly first. When you, bend, when you bend your knees slightly, then you can engage the glute medius and create the external rotation behavior. From there, you're going to try and hinge backwards like a stiff leg Romanian sumo deadlift and then you grab the bar. So once you grab the bar, make sure your back is straight, pull the slack, hinge in and out. The knees will go outwards and then you start to pull. Okay. So this is the dynamic way of doing it. The second way of doing it is the more static way. It's much more easier. And I recommend those who are new to sumo, sumo deadlifting, you should start in this first. This is a static setup. So once again, stance, start from the bottom, right? So stance, foot, bend your knees, external rotate first. Okay, so once you get this position ready, you want to slowly push your knees out as much as possible to your limit. Okay, so once you feel the tight sensation around your hips, that is where you hit the cap of your mobility. Next, what you want to do in order to reach the bar is to bring your hips back while maintaining a straight and neutral torso until your hand reach the bar. Now, this is your optimal position. From here, brace, pull the slack and then pull. Okay, now here comes the most important part of this video. How do I achieve the optimal hip height? 
so as to get into a most optimal starting position. This exercise is called a tempo deadlift. So what you want to do is to base on the setup that I mentioned to you, either dynamic or static, pull the weight up first, and then you're going to go for a tempo 3 second descent. So slow down the motion, maintain knees out, and then sit back as much as you can, and knees out again, until the bar just touches the floor. So when the bar touches the floor, this is where your hip should be. So at all times, in order to maintain consistency, every time you set up and pull, you want to feel that this is the, the right position, the hip position. Okay. So by doing this exercise, you can actually find out where is your optimal hip height position based on your own leverages and muscle composition. What do I mean by that? So obviously, if you are someone with a long torso, you will have to start in the position where your torso is more lean forward. So you won't be as assumed upright. Okay. However, if you are someone with super long arms and short torso, you will look like you are super upright. Okay. But the more important part is finding the optimal hip height for your starting sumo position. So we have reached the end of the video and I hope that we have taught you some of the tips and tricks on how do I get an optimal hip height for my starting position. Uh, I hope you enjoy this video and you if you find this content useful, please feel free to like our video, share and also make sure that you follow our YouTube. So I will see you next time. Goodbye.